chimpanzee eyes, cat eyes, dog eyes, and our eyes. Have you spotted the difference? That's right, the sclerae. Of all the animals on Earth, none of them have whites in their eyes as big as a human's. In scientific terms, the white area of an eye is called the sclera. In one 2001 study done by Japanese professor Kobayashi, the researchers looked at the sclerae of arboreal monkeys along with forest-dwelling gorillas, orangutans, and chimpanzees. After some calculations, it was discovered that the size of our sclerae trumped each one of these primate sclerae by a large margin. Our sclerae are three times bigger than an orangutan's. Though, on occasion, a chimpanzee is born with a mutation that gives it large white sclerae. Generally speaking, big eye whites are a uniquely human characteristic. So how in the world did we get these sclerae? Join me as we explore the evolutionary tale hidden within the whites of our eyes. Evolutionary biology explains the size and color of human sclerae with a hint of sociology. Introducing the cooperative eye hypothesis. It states that as humans needed to communicate more, we evolved wider, larger sclerae to better read each other's gaze. In other words, having a sclera that's lighter in color and larger in size makes it easier for others to notice your eye movements as well as the direction of your gaze. Evolutionary biologist Professor Chang De Ik mentions in his book Ultra Sociality that the whites of human eyes are important when focusing on a group's attention on a common objective. Would you like an example? Let's say we're at a company meeting, but one employee hasn't gotten off his smartphone yet. The team leader gives them a wordless stare. What happens next? Well, the other team members begin staring. What happens next will leap up to your imagination. As you can see, having wide, white sclerae helps our pupils stand out, letting others know what you can do with neither sound nor motion. Not only that, but our sclerae help us convey emotions. Think about your eyes going wide when you're surprised. It seems that for a species that values cooperation as much as we do, natural selection favors conspecifics with large eye whites. For this to make sense, however, there would need to be evidence of humans being sensitive to changes in each other's gaze. That evidence came in the form of a study done by primatologist Dr. Michael Tomasello in 2007. While an experimenter turned his head or shifted his gaze, Dr. Tomasello would observe the reactions of the chimpanzees, gorillas, bonobos, and human infants. During the so-called gaze-following experiment, the experimenter performed four different actions. First, the experimenter faced the ceiling with his eyes closed. Second, without moving his head, the experimenter looked at the ceiling. Third, both head and eyes were raised towards the ceiling. And fourth, the experimenter stared straight ahead without any other motion. It might be fun to pause and try to guess the experiment results. Here's one thing we learned. Apes are keenly affected by head direction. They looked toward the direction of the experimenter and turned their heads, even when they were closing their eyes. Human infants, however, were different. Compared to when the experimenter faced upward with his eyes closed, the infants were more sensitive to when the experimenter only looked up with his eyes. In fact, the effect of the experimenter only shifting his pupils was five times more prevalent than when he only moved his head. This indicates that infants are especially affected by pupil movement. Moreover, results from research into the autism spectrum seem to support the cooperative eye hypothesis. To simplify, having autism means that a person may experience difficulty with social interactions. An autistic person might find it difficult to focus on another person's eyes, or have trouble realizing when they have locked eyes with someone. According to Harvard University neurobiology professor Margaret Livingstone's research, which was published in Nature Neuroscience, parents frequently looking into the eyes of children with a high risk of autism can reduce the chances of their children being diagnosed with autism. These studies show that exchanging looks with other people plays an important role in social communication. Pennsylvania State University anthropology professor Pat Shipman says that this type of cooperative gaze reading would have been supremely useful when hunting other animals. She also developed the theory that tens of thousands of years ago, in the process of domesticating dogs into man's best friend, our sclerae could have grown in size. To put it another way, evolution may have pushed human sclerae to grow larger to better communicate with our canine hunting partners. As evidence, Professor Shipman pointed to an experiment done by cognitive scientist Emo Teglas. He showed that canine gaze follows humans, just like human infants, with special emphasis on the direction of the pupils. 
And looking at the numbers, hunting with a dog means you're nine times more likely to find an agouti and six times more likely to find an armadillo. So it must have been an advantage for our ancestors to be able to communicate with their dogs efficiently. However, the aforementioned cooperative eye hypothesis seems to receive more countenance at the moment. Anyway, one thing we can be sure of is that there ain't no sclera like a human's. Maybe that's why so many animated characters have large white sclerae, to help them look more human and to help us follow their gaze. So, what do you think after watching this video? Perhaps the next time you look in the mirror, you'll be reminded of how special your sclerae are. Science is a window to the world. This has been Science Dream. Thank you.